welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video and today we are going to be talking about harry potter <laughs> the whole reason why i even got the idea to spur in this video is because a couple months ago before stuff really started to hit the fan with jk rowling i ended up actually pre-ordering this amazing 20th edition uh taiwanese um edition of the harry potter books so real quick while i'm talking i'm gonna um, put that on in the background for something to kind of look at later in the video i am going to go ahead and go into more in depth with the books because this is a beautiful set but obviously i had to kind of get my full intentions and like expectations i guess out of the way and what i'm going to be doing going forward with harry potter stuff so first off like most people this is a complicated like topic to kind of talk about the reason why this is challenging for me is i was never those readers that went based off of authors so like when twilight came out i wasn't like wow stephanie myers is like a weirdo <laughs> like she wrote all these really bad teenage books or whatever it's like i literally just talked about the books and it was the same thing with harry potter like i never connected jk rowling and harry potter together so but that aside my point is just that i always just saw harry potter in its world as that and i talked to other fans as if you know harry potter is a place that we really love i never really brought up jk rowling even when she started like adding stuff afterwards like i was never really like on pata more or like paying attention to all the stuff that she added i think the most interesting thing was probably just the like american schools when she started talking about like ill of the morning and stuff like that but that was interesting so long story short that's the challenge for me is that i never really looked at jk rowling's stuff as that and i only saw the community in harry potter for what it was or what actually not even for what it was but what what my interpretation of it was and that's kind of another thing is like going forward a lot of people are like well you can't even really enjoy it because when you see stuff like Hermione who's apparently like JK Rowling's favorite character and it's apparently supposed to be based off of her and the way that she handles the um house elf thing it's like all the stuff they're now seeing from this like terrible person and honestly I still don't see that I still think it's like up to interpretation and it just feels like Harry Potter is just something that the community has claimed. So I've always been able to separate what I guess JK Rowling's intention was and like how I'm perceiving it. And honestly, if for some reason you guys don't know even what I'm talking about, I'm sure I'm probably the last ones that are even going into it, but this is all coming off of JK Rowling's heavily transphobic nature like the way she's handling a whole like group of humans and it's just i'm not really well versed into it i never read her paper that she put out or, or anything like that so i'm sure there's probably a lot of other videos you can use if you want to if you want to become more knowledgeable on the subject and see exactly what's going on uh, one thing i did read which i really enjoyed was was daniel radcliffe's like short kind of message to everyone of all the fans um i will go ahead and like link that below because that's like the one website i did go to and read myself and honestly like, i agree with it completely you know if harry potter changed your life if it helped you through some things and find a community and find yourself then you know like no one can take that away from you it's just that pretty much what we have to do at this point is just be careful with you know the way we support the author that's unfortunately getting money from our love which goes on to the main point like i said like i made this video is merchandise so like a big thing that you probably want to be careful of that all people have mentioned is that if you want to continue to support harry potter try to buy things from creators like artists stuff like etsy and websites like that something that doesn't have the harry potter license on it so that when you give them your money it doesn't go to jk rowling and warner brothers and that's honestly one of the most disappointing things for me this obviously is <laughs> It seems like so selfish and petty considering that the reason why we're having to do this is because JK Rowling is, you know, acting incorrigible to a whole group of humans. And obviously the way they're feeling and what they're disappointed about is nothing compared to what I am. But that being said, I am a pretty big collector. I do like to spend my money on things that I really enjoy. I think my main three things that like I probably will always love, or at least said I always would love, would be Harry Potter. Avatar Last Airbender and Kingdom Hearts like merchandise for that stuff like I always get and one of the reasons why you kind of get the merchandise is of course to be happy when you see it and really like your collection and, and like to decorate your house but also you kind of want to show other people you want to express your love to other fans and be like hey look what I got you know check this out um, you know people would be like wow that's really cool I like that 
I mean, it's the whole reason why we usually put like bookshelves behind us and stuff like that if we were to do videos and things. So pretty much this video is like a, I guess a, not even a haul, but just, I just wanted to show everything that I have Harry Potter related because most likely it's not going to come up again. So before things like get any worse or, you know, before I literally shouldn't show it at all, I did want to show everything that I currently have. Just kind of want to get it out there. I want to express the things that like I, I love to keep, all the merchandise I've collected. And then of course I want to talk about the biggest buy I just did, which was the Taiwanese special edition, which is absolutely gorgeous. Again, this like literally has nothing to do with JK Rowling. It's just, I just have to... I just want to express how awesome this artist is. I mean, I can't even read their books. They're in a language I cannot comprehend. <laughs> but I wanted to show those off in a little bit. And the last thing I'm probably still going to continue to support in Harry Potter is my Ravenclaw edition of the Harry Potter novels. So right now we're up to the fifth book. So there's only two more left. So obviously the completionist in me doesn't want to stop at just five books. I don't plan on selling all my stuff. I think of fair amount of people do support that you know if you've already had all this harry potter stuff there's no point in like getting rid of it all she already has your money it's like whatever but i didn't want to stop at just five books not only that but i think being i love the house system and what the community did with it like yeah jk rowling created or wrote about the house system but i think it's the community that really took it on you know we're the ones that you know made it our own we we talked to other fans about the houses we sort literally like random like other movies and other fictions into houses i mean how jk rowling at bare minimum just made gryffindor the good guys and slytherin the bad guys and there are slytherins out there in the world are all the slytherins bad no so i feel like the house system is just kind of special to the community and as a ravenclaw i feel like it helped me fit i guess a part of my personality somewhere you know i'm not really the smartest person <laughs> at all but you know i always like the idea of chasing knowledge that's why i think whenever i take like one of those quizzes or whatever i usually end up a ravenclaw because you know i may not always be smart but i do like the pursuit of knowledge i like having wisdom them. I like taking things slow and really thinking about like the big picture before continuing. It's just, it's just being a Ravenclaw is just something special to me. And so I kind of just wanted to preface that with that being probably the last purchase I'm probably going to continue to support. I most likely might still get the picture books as well, even though they're going to be insanely expensive. But I mean, honestly, I mean, again, I feel like even the picture books, I think the reason why I love them so much isn't because of JK Rowling. It's like the artist that is creating these amazing books. So um, obviously, if you don't know, I'm like a big art person. I love I love supporting like artists and things like that. So there were a lot of times where if I see something, I really like it. I get it because of the art. So right now I'm probably up to four. I don't know if the fifth picture book is coming out yet or not, but I have the first four books. And then I got this edition, I believe, on Amazon as well. But I have the Harry Potter, uh, I guess, newer collection. Like that artwork is like so good. And I love when you see from the binding how it makes like the whole castle like that was so cool <laughs> i think i've only seen one other person have that set and i saw uh murphy napier have it and i was like that is a set i have to buy <laughs> so i also have the gryffindor edition of harry potter and the philosopher's stone i think i actually bought it for someone as a gift and ended up not um giving to them so i just held on to it i don't plan on getting like the rest of them though i just thought it was kind of cool there's something about ha there's something about the first book i think it's just because it represents harry potter it's the first novel so i have a couple different editions of the first harry potter book so obviously i have the gryffindor one i have the ravenclaw one and then picture book regular version and then another one i was really excited about is this is actually one of the first Italian books I ever bought back when I was studying abroad. Me and another student, we really liked to read. And I think we ended up running out of English books. I think just randomly, I'm like, I still couldn't really read it that well. I'm not like fluent in Italian. I'm even worse so now. But when I went to the bookstore and I saw and I was looking at Italian books, I was like, I feel like I just wanted to get one. I was like, what's a perfect book where I've probably read the first one enough times that I could probably easily get through or have an easier time getting through it in Italian. And I saw Harry Potter and I was like, well, that's going to be it. <laughs> so I did buy the first version of Harry Potter in Italian. Again, it's more of like a merchandise kind of like what I have. And it's kind of cute. It's obviously very, it's very kids book looking. Like it doesn't seem very mature. Even the artwork inside isn't like super amazing. But I think all the Harry Potter, and I don't have my original set anymore. But I think even the original Harry Potter art, like the chapter headings, 
wasn't always like amazing it was always kind of had this little like kid thing to it so i don't know so as you've probably seen you can see like some of the pictures so by now i've gotten through all of the pictures of like my bookshelves i probably talked about everything but the last thing we have to get to and that is of course the taiwanese edition so these are beautiful they're incredible so i know i showed that clip at the beginning but i kind of wanted to get i wanted to like put bigger pictures up front and kind of talk about them because there is so much to these books like so much to these covers that i absolutely love so first off as you'll see at that image at the beginning and i'll put it up here it came in this like box set that has this really cool like like it's like pop out part like you can like open up this part and you'll see like this really cool art set on the back the box itself though is like wrecked so i could probably have to tape it together if i want to put the books in there but i also want the but that's on the other side of the box so the one in the part that has the cool castle imagery and stuff like that that would be on the back so if the books are in there then you can't see the spines you would just be seeing the castle part so i'm probably just gonna leave the books out and just put them in front of the castle like i like i'll probably have an image at the end or right now <laughs> but that was one that was one really cool part it also came with like a tote bag and like some other like little stuff but it wasn't really that important so without further ado let's go ahead and hop into and get a really close look at these look at this amazing artwork so first harry potter and the sorcerer's stone or philosopher's stone i have no idea what it's probably called in <laughs> taiwanese um, but as you can see, this book is just like, oh my god, it's amazing. It just perfectly fits the magic of the first book. It's like you see Harry there um, with the sorting hat on. The fact that the sorting hat turns into the castle, like what the hell, that's awesome. And then you also can see the train that's like kind of slowly wrapping around him. You'll see um, Hogwarts Express right there. Uh, I just love Harry's face. Like he just looks so, like obviously I think when you read the book, he doesn't seem happy <laughs> when he's like sitting on the, the sorting hat. But I like the idea of him. But obviously the whole point of Harry is that he is so happy to be here to to be part of this magic to be away from his like terrible home so i just love that they like gave him that kind of expression um you got dumbledore up there looking gorgeous the way his beard like floats around it and it kind of almost looks like a cloud and now it goes into the steam of the of the train like are you guys seeing this it's incredible uh i love the magic of dumbledore's hat i love his like half moon spectacles of the floating candles and then of course you also can see there's like mcgonagall the cat sitting on dumbledore's beard there's the dragon or norbert which i wouldn't have even thought about putting on here but there's norbert right next to hagrid who's holding the lantern right next to the unicorn so it's like i feel like all that is like even that itself it's like that's all right in the book like norbert the unicorn hagrid like all that's really together and then of course you see the thing that we all wanted as children and still do is an owl dropping off harry's letter and you even can kind of see the letters are sort of like floating around the spine of the book and on the back side it always represents like a character and a bit more art so obviously the first one's going to have harry with the school and then the flying keys so it's kind of like and I like that going from like the flying, the like floating letters to the flying keys. I mean, it's just incredible. Like this, like the artwork of the first book is like absolutely perfect. Like this is the kind of crap that like, like this is why I get so angry at like JK Rowling. It's like something like this just came out and like I can barely be excited about it because this woman just doesn't know how to treat humans. Like whatever. She's dumb. The fans are not. Like the fan, like, <laughs> like we deserve a better author. So anyways, we're going to move on to the second one. So as you can see right from the front, the Chamber of Secrets. I mean, I mean, just look at it. It's like, like you get, your eyes just go to so many places. Let's just slow down a second. So obviously we have the flying car, which is awesome. We do see Scabbers in the back seat. We see Ron freaking out. We see Harry just happy again. <laughs> I love how he has, it looks like the sweater he got from Mrs. Dursley. That's awesome. Oh, see, so like, like as I'm like looking at this, I'm even finding new things. So right behind the car, you can see that that is the Basilisk Fang stabbing Tom Riddle's diary. Um, and then towards the front of the car, or I guess to the, the right of the car, the right front end, that is a, <laughs> oh my god. Um, oh god what's it called the crying baby plant mandrake that's it <laughs> that mandrake oh my god those are always the cutest like ugliest things uh you grasp your mandrake firmly you pull it sharply up out of the box <laughs> got it 
And now we dunk it down into the other pot and pour a little sprinkling of soil to keep him warm. Uh, we got Hedwig, always flying like a beast. I actually have the train in the background as well. Looks like it's like going through like a window or something like that. And then of course as we go higher up the book we can see um, Aragog of course. I love the little spiders crawling around Aragog and like Aragog's look like that's so fucking cool. And then you can see like the window pane like goes off into spider web looking like formation to represent Aragog climbing on the on like the spider web like ooh. And on the right side we have oh. Good meaning Dobby. We have Dobby. I love how it's in the middle of like performing the magic, like, you know, like straight from the movie, that scene where it just like snaps and then disappears. Love you, Dobby. You're gonna murder Harry, but I love you, Dobby. And of course on the left, we have mother frickin' Tom Riddle himself. He's just so sinister, but gorgeous because that's what Tom Riddle is. So anyways, I love this one. Like I still like the first one better. It's definitely far more iconic. But I love this one. And on the second, I love this back because it has one of my favorite characters, Miss Ginny. I think it's interesting she has a little, she has like a snitch like barrette or whatever. And obviously she's never been described as that, as that. But I love that because in the future she does become the seeker. So I think that's really cool. And then of course in the background you have the frickin' burrow, which is iconic, of course. We love our Weasleys, so I love that. Oh, I also forgot to say that the chapter artwork inside has actually been updated as well. There's like, like my God, I could go into, I could seriously make a whole nother video just showing all the artwork inside. If you guys by chance do let me know, cause I'll definitely take you like on a tour of the books. Like I said, I can't read it. It's all in Taiwanese, <laughs> um, but my God, the, there's chapter art and then there's just like random like big pages of artwork like seriously the artwork inside is amazing. Alrighty moving on to number three. My god Prisoner of Azkaban has to be my favorite cover <laughs> like we'll get to it in a second. Prisoner of Azkaban was always my favorite. I think it was really my favorite before the movie came out because it, it's where it started to get darker and it was so interesting to me like the map and like them hit, like the twist of like Sirius Black and who he is and, like what's going on. It was always my favorite. It's still probably my favorite movie as well because it's when the kids are still like some of the later ones I really like, but sometimes it feels like their their awkwardness is catching up with them. Almost like they're starting to realize we're real people pretending to have like magic. Like some of this, <laughs> I just remember like I think um, Order of the Phoenix when Neville is trying to perform magic and he's just sort of like pointing his wand at nothing and I feel like nothing's really happening it's really it's this really awkward scene where it feels like the actors realize yes I am pointing a stick at nothing pretending that magic is happening or something like that fix the point and try again Expel Expel Anyways, short tangent, but that's kind of my history with it, is that the third one was my favorite book for the longest time, then the movie came around, and then I think the... Oh god, whoa, actually maybe it still is my favorite, I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna stick with the third one, sure. Anyways, let's get back to the artwork, because this is phenomenal. Like, first off, right there in the center, we have Harry and Hermione. Love Hermione, favorite character. They're freaking riding Buckbeak, and the way he designed Buckbeak is amazing. Um, we're gonna look right to the left of Buckbeak, and you see the book that terrorized everyone. Thanks, Hagrid. And then right to the right, we see Scabbards. And then below that, and like like it, and it crawls under the spine, is like all the Dementors. Like that's so cool. Like that's that's incredible. I love that. And I think where your eye is really drawn to, just right there in the middle, like the freaking stag, like Harry's. Patronus is gorgeous and then the moon which obviously represents Lupin and like the werewolf curse like that's beautiful and then right to the right of course we have Lupin and then to the left we have Sirius Black <laughs> our favorite best friend who's supposed to be a father figure but a really bad father figure and like the way he's like smiling like oh I love that like even his smile it's like I honestly can feel like if you don't know who Sirius Black is, like that can look sinister. Like he's laughing maniacally, like he's gonna murder Harry. But then like when you know him, it's like it also can turn into a smile that's like heartwarming. Like he's happy to be free and with his like godson. Like, that's incredible. That's hard to, 
That is hard to pull off for sure. And then we go to the back and again we have my favorite character Hermione and Hogsmeade because it's the first time we're going to see Hogsmeade. It's awesome. You actually can even see Hagrid and McGonagall walking there on the street. It's just so gorgeous. Like oh my god. So yeah this is definitely my favorite cover, favorite series, favorite character on the back. Okay moving on to the fourth one. This is Okay, I mean, they're all gorgeous. I'm gonna keep saying gorgeous and you're gonna deal with it. So here we have Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Oh my God, where do we begin? One thing, I love the color. I love the bluish gold and even the bit of crimson. So we're gonna start right by the title where there's Harry flying in his broomstick, holding the egg. Freaking iconic for obvious reasons. Right above him is the Goblet of Fire itself. That's amazing. But then you also can see that the fire is the freaking uh, curse mark. Like, what the hell? That's so cool. And I'm gonna keep going up because like Fleur Delacour looks fucking phenomenal and her hair <laughs> is like, I'm sure it's everyone's goal. Like that's what you want your hair to look like. That's, I feel like those like commercials come from, I, I recently saw this trailer where it's like, or like an ad for like really shiny, like sleek hair. And it's like this really long, like straight as hell, like hair, I don't know. But that's Fleur right there looking amazing. We see to the left, Mr. Cedric Diggory, which he looks like a badass. I don't really imagine him like Cedric Diggory, probably because all I see now is Edward Cullen, but whatever. And then right next to him, it's like a little, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, what is this little bug? I'm like, I'm about to show my lack of knowledge, but that's freaking Rita Skeeter. That's cool. So we got her little bitch ass over there. Speaking of your parents, were they alive? How do you think they'd feel? Proud? Or concerned that your attitude shows at best a pathological need for attention, at worst a psychotic death wish. Hey, my eyes aren't glistening with the ghost of my past. And then to the right we have the scorpion and I'm at a loss there, I'm not really sure. It's probably from one of the uh, challenges, I'm sure, but I don't really remember a scorpion. Anyway, so right above that little scorpion that I'm sure everyone knows but me, um, we have Victor Crumb. Which he looks like his armor looks so cool. Like that's some cool Dermstang armor. But his like his whole face, like, isn't he supposed to be I thought he was supposed to be handsome, but he just has like that broken nose. So you're like, uh I don't know. But I guess Cedric Digger is really handsome too, so it's hard to make him I don't know. There's Victor Crumb. He looks a little off, but I still think his armor looks really cool. Um, right above Victor Crumb is I'm assuming his team. It looks like that's probably his team flying, like from the tournament. Um, and then their ship. So there, and you guys you see the ship like right to the right of floor. We're gonna keep going up on the right side, and we have um oh god I don't remember his name. I know it sounds really stupid, but um Barty Crouch. There we go. <laughs> so we have Crouch, and if I'm wrong, I'm sure I'll find out. Um, but yeah, cause it can't be fudge. Yeah, it's definitely Barty Crouch. And to the right is their little, um, I definitely don't remember the house elf name at all. I know she's important, like Winky. Is it Winky or Blinky? Anyways. And then so we're going to go back towards the middle and we can see the three flags. Durmstrang, Boobachton, Boobachton. Does anybody, does anybody still question if they know how to pronounce things right in Harry Potter after 20 years? And of course Hogwarts. Keep going to the left and we're going to see it looks like the uh, carriage that Floor and the Boobachton um, girls came in. Right below that, before we get up to Mr. Grumpy Gills, right below that to the left actually, it looks like we can probably see... Um, I'm assuming another Vila, if that's what Floor is. Looks like it's coming out of her hair. It's a Vila or either a mermaid, but it looks like it's probably a Vila. And of course, in the top left, we have Mad-Eye Moody, which, I mean, that looks perfect. He looks old, crusty, he's got his cool eye. There we go. So then on the spine, we can see it start to, to, to turn into da, 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 the freaking World Cup, which honestly is the biggest travesty in the entire Harry Potter movie series is that we got barely anything of the world cup but you've got it in all of its glory on the back of this cover it's freaking phenomenal we have ron again who i feel like is not being done justice <laughs> like well we got him in the second book and he like looked freak out and freaked out in the car and in the back of this cover he like still looks like he's in shock like can he just look happy can he just look excited in the foreground right there we have the hungarian horn tail so that's incredible i love the way his tail wraps around if you look back on the spine you can probably see it on the front cover but we have like a floating um crumb like a little blimp or um 
festival thing. And yeah, I mean, you can just like probably point out all the stuff down here for days. You see the tents, you see the floating um, leprechaun. And holy crap, that stage. I just realized the way he designed that field is amazing. Like, it, see how it looks like it's the, the gold post are sitting on a giant snitch and the wings are part of the stadium like that's incredible like this artist is like going above and beyond to get like so many cool details like holy crap if they ever redo harry potter like they just need to do it in this art style just like a really long like cartoon or something like that wow this was incredible obviously the higher we go up in these books like the more stuff we can see because the more complicated they get but yeah this is incredible all right so we are moving on to the biggest book I know usually everyone can, I know people can usually tell the fifth one is the biggest book, but it sure shows in this edition. By the way, I didn't even, for, I forgot to even kind of bring this up, but uh, this edition is all hardback and the art is printed directly onto the hardback. That's usually, that's definitely not an American thing or I'm pretty sure even a UK thing. Uh, it's usually like a, well, other countries <laughs> added in. Um, I've only seen it a couple times, but I freaking love it. It's so cool looking. Anyway, so let's draw our eyes back to the gloriousness of the Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I love the color. That really dark aesthetic is beautiful. Like, holy crap. We're going to start with right in the middle where we see our main protagonist, Harry Potter, and he is writing a Thestral. And boy, does that Thestral look freaking gorgeous. So there's not too much below him. I might actually need some help on this one. Um, but below him, it looks like there are like two ghosts. I can't remember what they're from. Like when we when we dealt with ghosts, it's probably something at the end in the, the Department of Mysteries. Um, but anyway, but to his right, we have Kingsley Shacklebolt. So that's freaking cool. To the left, we have Tonks. So that's what's kind of cool. It's like these characters that probably wouldn't really get screen time on a cover are getting screen time on a cover in these books, and it's freaking phenomenal. Not here, Nifedora. Don't. Call me Nymphadora. So just above Tonks, we have a quill. Oh my god, it's the quill. I was trying to think, I was like, what would there be a quill for? So obviously this has to represent their punishment when they have to write, I must not tell lies and it scratches in their hand, into their hands. So that is the infamous quill. Hate you, bitch. We'll get to you in a second. Um, right above Harry, we like that gorgeous purple, like, oh my god. So we see um, that has to be um, Sirius's house. Don't ask me why I don't remember the address or what it's called. <laughs> but Sirius's house right there. I'm not sure why it's in like a... Well, I don't think it's in a purple force field. What I'm assuming that actually is, is the crystal ball. So I think that's a whole crystal ball. It just kind of looks like a force field, but I don't, that's not his protective charm. But anyways, um, we see freaking Harry. We see Sirius in his dog form right there in the middle. That's cool. Even though he's also right above it, but we'll get to that in a second. So to the right, we have Mad-Eye Moody, and to the left, that has to be Lupin again. Um, again, we see like little shadows above, at the top of the um, crystal ball. So I think that's really cool. I like how they implement the crystal ball. Or it's actually probably not in the crystal ball. It might just be the uh, prophecy. Because the crystal ball is more probably in the third one. I don't think there's too much about the crystal ball in this one. So that has to be the prophecy. See, like, I'm still, like, debating. You guys will probably look at this, too, and you're just like, obviously, we know what that is right away. And then, of course, on the left and right, we get the twins. Like, that's freaking cool. And I'm going to go ahead and shoot. I'm going to keep going with the twins. If you go to the top of the book and look behind all those characters, you see their fireworks. Like, that's so, like, you know how, like, that's, everyone loves that scene. Everybody loves Fred and George when they break out and they do fireworks. And this is in the freaking cover. Like, you see what I'm talking about? Like, these covers are amazing. And then, so right in the middle, we still have Sirius Black again, which I guess makes sense considering, you know, RIP. And then we'll go and switch to the right real quick. We have Cho Chang. Um, interesting, she got a, a spot on the cover. She's nice and everything, but you know, Ginny for the win. <laughs> That's really cool that she got to spot. She looks very stoic, very beautiful. I love the way she was designed. And of course on the left, looking real freaking gross. Like, wow, they made her real gross. Is literally the the biggest villain of the entire series, Umbridge. I freaking hate Umbridge. Like, reading the fifth book is so hard. Like, I don't, I know a lot of people say like, oh, you know, Harry's immature and like you know, whining, stuff like that. I think it's all reasonable. I think I understand his angst being um, like 15, dealing with everything he dealt with in the fourth one, dealing with all the stuff he's dealing with now. And the the unfairness of adults and what they do and how they treat the students is, uh, I can't read this book because 
I get so mad about what they're doing to the kids. I still think it's really good, especially great to invoke that kind of emotion in me. But I mean, it, it's all obvious why we hate Umbridge because um, Umbridge is a real person. You know, we've all have and we can deal with people like Umbridge. We don't have Voldemort in our lives, but we have Umbridges and that's why we hate her. All right. So going to the spine, it looks like we have more shadow spirit ghostiness stuff, but nothing really important. It looks like there is um, one big show of the of the fireplaces. So people using flu powder. All right, so on the back, this is gorgeous. This is like seriously just like some incredible concept art of like a really awesome video game. That's what this looks like. Like that is so incredible. So we'll start with the character in the back of this book. That's obviously Luna Lovegood. I love that she has her freaking radish earrings. Um, then we have the right to the left of her. We do see the um, phone booth that Mr. Weasley and Harry used to get into the ministry. And then we have the, you know, the famous fountain where it has, you know, all the goblins, centaurs. Like, that's just so cool. The way it's like floating and then pouring magic like that. Like, that's incredible. Can you imagine if that was in the movie? Oh, it's gorgeous. And then we see more of the fireworks in the top left corner. I said you can see the the flying letters towards the bottom right almost and of course people kind of just coming out of the uh, out of the flu network why did those <laughs> why do those fireplaces look so sinister though and that is it for book five already get ready kids because book six is freaking gorgeous so i love if you haven't watched any of my old videos i just did one for july where i talked about how much i love phoenixes and this aesthetic is gorgeous i love this gold and white aesthetic for harry potter and the in the half-blood prince so right away we can see harry holding i'm assuming is his his book for potions we're actually gonna go ahead and go below harry real quick so right below him you actually can see all of the inferni 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 uh that they deal with at the end so that's really cool they're like crawling up to uh kill him which is super scary to the right we see the felix felicities that's so cool i love and it also goes with the whole gold thing so nice touch to the left we do see the locket that they get out of the the cave at the end which of course is a fake and then above harry of course is professor dumbledore and again i love how they make his hat turn into the castle again that's really freaking cool and he's looking very solemn in this because we all know why he's dealing with some things um to the left there is little tom riddle looking so sinister and creepy but obviously very pretty that's incredible i just love that of course to the right in almost center stage is fox the phoenix that's absolutely gorgeous i love the way his tails like wrap around uh, Dumbledore and kind of like go past Harry. That's so cool. Oh, actually looks like right to the right of Dumbledore that kind of wraps around this mirror is looks like all the Death Eaters I'm assuming break into the castle. So you can see them like in the mirror. That's really freaking cool. So the top right, Miss my Miss Ginny Weasley gets another spot on the cover. I love that. She's obviously doing her seeker business that she gets into in the sixth book. I love that. And it has like more Quidditch stuff, which is really cool. And then in the top left, we have, of course, Snape, who gets his debut on the cover. I didn't really thought it took for him to get, on, get a spot on here. And if you notice, very sadly, um, that tower is the astronomy tower. And you do see the, um, the death mark coming out of it because obviously that's after uh, Professor Dumbledore gets murdered so if we go to the back of the book very fittingly we have draco malfoy which like honestly i was never one for like oh jacob draco malfoy i ship him but he's looking very handsome back of this cover so it's very fitting that he gets this one of course because most of the book is involved around draco and, and harry being obsessed with draco look to the top left we see another hippogriff i'm not sure why though if we go to the bottom left we actually can see it looks like bellatrix there on a wanted uh, flyer and again you can kind of see the bottom of like the inferni inferni being drawn coming from the ground going into the front of the cover so that's a really cool transition and then we get freaking the joke shop the joke shop <laughs> made it to the cover that's so cool so we see the the trio leaving the joke shop and then what i really like is of course the way that they did the twins i love how it looks like their mouths are like like laughing and it's like the windows and then you even see the car coming out. I don't remember if they even describe really what it looks like, but that's so cool. I think I remember them talking about the faces. I think even the movie shows the faces. I don't think the movie shows the car coming out. So that's really cool that they incorporated the car into their joke shop. But you even can see in the left hand of the corner, that's Borgen and Burks. 
and that has to be the infamous vanishing cabinet and i'm pretty sure that um that's draco standing there in the window too so wow this is incredible I, the back is so eerie too compared to like the glorious of the fur of the of the front but this is just incredible work and finally we get to harry potter and the deathly hollows so there is so much with this like just let this sink in for a second like this is incredible so first off, I love their, like, their armor or whatever that is. Like, that's really cool. I've seen that a couple of times where people or where artists create wizard armor and it always looks really cool. I love what it looks like he's wearing. Um, right there in the front, of course, is the snitch, which the snitch looks gorgeous. It also looks deadly as fuck. I would not want to be grabbing that while I'm flying in a broom. But of course, that is the snitch that Harry gets that has the stone in it which is really cool i'm assuming i don't know if we're actually supposed to be able to read that writing i don't know if that's taiwanese or not but i wonder if that actually says i open at the end so if it does that's really cool um right to the right of harry we see the stone and then to the left we see the invisibility cloak and then of course we see ron holding um oh my god i forgot what it's called well, we know what it is. The lighter that puts out light. And then to the right, we see Hermione holding her gift, I guess you'd call it, from Dumbledore. Her book of runes. Or her, like, her really old copy of Beetle and the Bard. So that's cool. Obviously, that's so many. That's so cool for so many reasons. If we keep going, if we keep tight right in the middle there, we can see um, Hogwarts on fire. Obviously, that's during the fight. I think the coolest part about this is obviously if you look at it as a whole, it's like the triangle is like framing our trio and you see so the cloak is the bottom left the stone is the bottom right and the wand is at the top so that makes the deathly hollows and that's really cool so if we actually stay at the tip of the triangle we can of course see the white dragon that the trio uses to escape green gots and that actually is all four of the households and their horcrux which is so cool obviously except for gryffindors there's no gryffindor horcrux but you see um, the snake with the locket you can see hufflepuffs with the cup and then you see Ravenclaws with the diadem. So that's really cool. Obviously, I don't think Ravenclaws really looks like a raven, but whatever. <laughs> um, but that's so awesome. You see in the left and the right there, you see that the, um, you see Death holding his wand and then Death holding the stone. I still don't see Death actually holding the cloak, obviously, though, because he, he's wearing it. But I thought that was interesting. And then, of course, the top, we're going to get the top left first. That's obviously Voldemort. So cool. Like, that's, that's a really cool image of Voldemort. You snaky little bitch. And the top right, we actually see Hagrid. And it's really hard to see, but that's actually Hagrid holding Harry, which is awesome like he like he looks sad i think it's so cool that it's like hard to tell so you don't even really know so it's not even really spoilers but it's so cool that he's actually holding harry like, that's amazing and if you see kind of right uh, right behind harry there's like a snake tail that's gonna that's gonna sneak its way um by the cover the um spine does have hedwig which is incredibly sad because <laughs> we know what happens to hedwig in this novel and the back cover is, ooh, it's atmospherically beautiful. Someone I don't think we really expected, but I think a lot of some, a lot of fans would enjoy is Neville Longbottom. He gets the final cover, which is honestly kind of fitting, you know? There's a lot of debate on whether or not Neville's also a chosen one, also a hero, I mean, but he did he did help stop Voldemort. He killed the last Horcrux, so fitting that he gets the last cover. Uh, of course, we have Nagini there, and then that's Shell Cottage, and that's just beautiful. Actually, real quick, right back up, top behind Neville we do see the uh the mentors who are most likely attacking Hogwarts so right below there we have Shell Cottage which is gorgeous I love I freaking love that aesthetic of like that little bridge that goes to another piece of um I guess the ground that like it's like a bridge over more water I just love that effect I love the way it makes like natural stairs onto the beach like I, I've just I've never cared about Shell Cottage. Like I didn't care about it in the movie. I didn't care about it in the book. Like I'm like whatever. I'm sure it's fine. But like this, like this makes it seem like it's that amazing fantasy, like secret home on the beach. Like it looks gorgeous. But the way the colors are just makes it seem like it's still really like ominous and it's more like it's not super happy. Like it's like you can tell like when they go to Shell Cottage in the book, they're like at that midway point where they. They think they know how to proceed, but they've lost people. And it's just like they're on that precipice of like 
the end and that's what like the whole back cover like represents that and as we can see we do have the group um, retreating back to the cottage it looks like you can definitely see Floor and Charlie there so they're waiting for the group to get there you can see uh, Floor there Hermione Ron I don't remember the last uh, forgive me I don't remember the last person there I think it's it's not Justin the Dean I don't remember um but who cares about them because almost right there in the foreground we do have Harry bearing Dobby that's heartbreaking <laughs> like first you got Hedwig on the spine and now you have Harry bearing Dobby I mean it's beautiful like I would even think about that like to think about that capturing that scene specifically and again it's like a lot of this stuff isn't really spoilers but when you know it's like it blows your mind like okay yeah I know exactly what that is it's not obvious if you haven't read the book but I do so that's just incredible oh actually if you notice right next to um Neville um, and like that gold kind of like drawing work or whatever it shows the sword coming out of the hat That's really cool Obviously to symbolize Neville taking the sword out of the hat and killing Nagini And just like obviously the idea of the fact that Nagini is wrapped around the book next to Neville and that's who he kills So I don't know it's incredible. Obviously, you guys have seen it for yourselves. So this is the 20th year special edition Harry Potter series from uh, Taiwanese. I think it's specifically by Nanmi Books. So obviously, when I saw it, I had to get it. And this was pre-ordered, like, like I said, at the very beginning of the year, like months before. J.K. Rowling really got terrible. But anyways, we're done talking about her. This is just to gush about the book series. So yeah, these are all incredible. They're amazing. So if you want to see more, let me know. I'd be, I'd be more than happy to go through some of the chapters and pick out like the best ones. If you guys are really curious about a specific chapter that stands out to you and you want to know, let me know and I'll find it. I actually don't know how I'm going to find it because I can't read what they say. Um, but I'll do my best to guess. But yeah, I love these books. This artwork is incredible. Like I said, this has nothing to do with her. This is like all someone like this guy had to have been a fan whoever created this artwork had to have been a fan like i seriously doubt he just sat there and was like hey somebody tell me stuff about this like book and like i'll like try to incorporate it like he had to he or she had to have been a fan that made these covers with like so much care and love they're just absolutely gorgeous so this video is getting really long it's already about four 54 minutes unedited so i'm sure i'll, I'll get it a little bit lower than that but yeah, I mean, listen, this is the stuff I want to do. Like, I wanted to really gush about um, Harry Potter stuff because I do love it. It is unfortunate that its creator is ignorant and a bigot and whatever. But yeah, let's discuss anything you guys want down below. If you guys liked any of this stuff. If you guys have your own sort of goodbye Harry Potter video, leave me that. I will actually go and say the last Harry Potter video I'm probably making, well, I guess two... Uh, it'll probably still get referenced a bit, but there is still the Newt's Magical Readathon that's happening. I did forget to talk about this, but I will end up actually participating in that. It's supposed to be for the whole month of August. The creator doesn't really care. She's kind of just go with your, go at your own pace with it. So I'm actually extending mine like the entire year. So most likely my next book is probably going to be my Newt's Readathon list and things like that. I'm going to talk about it there. But honestly, I've been talking for way too long. I don't talk this long. My throat's starting to feel scratchy and it's really hot in this room. I feel like that's usually a trend is everyone has to turn off their air conditioning and their fans to make videos. And this is way too long of a video in this heat right now. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. Leave any comments down below if you want to discuss it. And I will see you all next time. Bye now.